Captain Kazoo on the radio. <laughs> Tuba now, Captain Kazoo on the radio with Hum Don't Blow, the new latest Kazoo song from who else? Captain Kazoo. Words and music by Captain Kazoo. Anyway, hey, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, indeed, it's National Kazoo Day here in the U.S. of A. and around the world. I, you know, if it's a uh, it's like New Year's, some places it's already yesterday or it's already tomorrow. It doesn't. But what I'm saying is, under normal conditions, which never have existed, uh, National Kazoo Day is on January 28th. At least that's what the old gentleman who de developed the whole thing uh, specified. I guess I think that's the story. Anyway, anyway, doesn't matter. It's National Kazoo Day, and what we want to do today is recognize, recognize the kazoo. The kazoo, uh, see most people, hang on, I'm, I'm again, I'm again totally unprepared, unprepared. I'm going to grab this guy over here, I think I'm going to grab that guy over there. This is a, this is a kazoo be kazoo. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, guys. I, I, I haven't remembered all the names, clever names that you have for these things. Anyway, this is a regular kazoo, and it has a horn in it, right? Now the horn makes it a bit louder. See the difference? I got it in. And when I took it out, the volume dropped. And the tone changed a bit too, didn't it? Anyway, we're here today to uh, honor, honor the kazoo. I was going to do, I'll tell you what I was going to do. I was going to do a thing uh, where I showed the evolution of the kazoo from the uh, the stone kazoo, uh, the, 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 stone kazoo, the, uh, the reed kazoo, the gourd kazoo, you know, and stepping all the way up to the, something like the vocalizer, which essentially is a, a kazoo, or rather a synthesizer, sin, synthesizer <laughs> that is voice activated which means all you have to do is hum into it and it sounds like now you've seen enough of those demonstrations you've seen of uh, I've got over 200 videos on YouTube and this will be one more and there are many more that many others that demonstrate the vocalizer 1000 and its remarkable abilities now but when we when we get back to to uh, to very simple things, the simplest kazoo was of course one of the first kazoos. Now I had intended, as it happens all the time, I had intended to do this, that, and the other thing. You you, you ever decide that you were one going to do this, that, and the other thing, and you ended up doing nothing? Hey, happens to me all <laughs> happens to me all the time. What I wanted to do was just show you some unusual kazoos, and if possible, let you hear them. Some of these are so old that the membranes have long since uh, disintegrated, and uh, really, uh, all of, with all the kazoos we have in the uh, in the kazoo museum in Captain Kazoo's Kazoo Museum. Uh, that are displayed on uh, Captain Kazoo's uh, YouTube and displayed also on the Captain Kazoo's website, which is www.captainkazoo.com, C-O-M. Very simple. So, actually, what, um, what uh, triggered this uh, response to National Kazoo Day, because I was 
uh, you know, the van has been decommissioned, and usually we go out in the van and give away kazoos and blah, blah, blah. But uh, this idea was triggered by by Balaz, my friend in, uh, in uh, Vienna, who was looking to purchase one of these guys, okay? Or a guy similar to this. very clean right very clean uh, these are rather uh, or I, I should say the the newest kazubi uh, chrome made in England uh, kazobos I think they're calling them I'm not again once again I'm not I haven't remembered all the names of all the different they got a million kazoos they got a million names for them uh, this guy here they have created one I'm going to put this guy back over here and take this guy out. They have created one in a double resonator version. Now, this is the plastic model. This model is somewhere in the neighborhood of $12, $11 or $12. This guy, the chrome version of this, is like much more expensive. Both of them are very, uh, very good. In fact, let me uh, dual resonator, one at this end and one at this end, and uh, your uh, mouthpiece is right here in the middle. Saxy, a saxophone tone in there. So I recommended to Balaz, I said, either one of these, but he, I don't think he wanted to spend, uh, he was going to buy several for his, for his band or his, whatever, his group. And uh, uh, the chrome ones would have cost him several hundred dollars. The plastic ones, which I think are great, very, very loud, very, as if you had a kazoo band or whatever. Uh, they'd be just they work out just fine because they would uh, they'd be loud enough to be heard and they're uh, they hold they hold everything together very nicely uh, I've got I've got a bunch of kazoos <coughs> hello hello who is it who is it <coughs> oh it's my doggy this guy here this is a kazoo. All the things I'm going to show you today are kazoos because this is National Kazoo Day. So I'm showing you some national kazoos. This is an un unmarked, unnamed, uh, machine-made kazoo. In other words, the, the, the parts are not uh, simply jammed together uh, or crimped or uh, some other simplistic way of joining them but you can see here's your here's your uh, here's your membrane right in this turret this is the turret here right? that guy in there this guy is right in here these are machine parts machines not handmade. 
the threads, the whole thing is the bell, the whole structure of this item is is machine made by somebody who knew what they were doing and uh, I don't I have no information on this. I did receive at one time some information from uh, another collector that had a similar one, but he didn't know any more about them than I did. Not bad, and uh, we have done absolutely nothing. We have didn't replace the uh, didn't replace the the, the, the membrane. Uh, this little guy I, I made myself. Well, I say made. I didn't make it. I found I found this funnel or horn part. Uh, this looks like it might have had a little chain on it or something. And then I took a kazoo. A gold-plated kazoo, and I jammed it in there, jammed it in there so it's airtight. Yeah, is that clean? That's very clean. It's homemade. I mean, that's a that's a gold-plated kazoo into a. I guess it's a brass. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna put this guy over here. And oh, uh, one of my favorite people, Dawson Dawson Soller, who made. It was formerly with NASA, I think, before he died. Now, Dawson Soler made, uh, you've seen some of his guitars. We had one of them around here the other day. It made odd guitars, handmade guitars, not cigar box guitars. Everything was handmade. The, the, the body, the neck, the but, And then he also made a kazoo like this. And he made some violins and etc. This simply has a kazoo. He made this whole thing here. These... These, are, you can activate them and press them, but they don't do anything. Uh, the sound is going all the way through, although there are openings here of breathers. But it's rather ingenious. It's, it's quite interesting. In fact, probably only one of these in the world. In the world, okay? I'm going to set this guy right down here. And let's see, who else do we have with us today? Oh, one of my favorites, my all-time favorites. And that is the Bob Burns Kazoo Bazooka. Can you read that? Kazoo Bazooka. Well, I'm trying to get it right in the spotlight there. If there is a spotlight. Let me turn on this. Oh, where'd the spotlight go? Bob, <laughs> Bob Burns Kazood Bazooka. Now, I doubt very many people who are around today watching this video uh, even uh, knew who, what Bob, who or what Bob Burns was. Bob Burns was a a musician, comedian, etc. in the uh, 30s. Uh, uh, and uh, one of the interesting things about Bob Burns was that he invented, or, or, or constructed, I should say, a large instrument which he called a bazooka 
and uh, they, the uh, slide that he had on his bazooka actually would change the tone. Now, unfortunately, uh, the, my good friend uh, Ormley Gumpfudgeon passed away some time ago, and he was uh, the last, I think, uh, of the uh, original players. In fact, I think he billed himself as the only living bazooka player. He, he actually played the bazooka. You can see him on uh, on the internet. Uh, just look for Ormley Gump Budget on YouTube, okay? Uh, anyway, these guys uh, were popularized by the radio show on which he presented the kazooka, the big one, the real one. And the public outcry was, give us kazoos, as I've always said, give the people what they want. Give us kazoos. So they manufactured these, which the slide doesn't do anything. And it had a kazoo. It's actually got, if I could unscrew this, or just wedge it out, it's probably just wedged in. See, so many things were just wedged or jammed in the old days. There wasn't any... Ow! Well, hey, believe me when I'm telling you that this section, section right here, that little section there, comes out and there's a membrane in there and blah, blah, blah. And that is the Bob Burns Kazood Bazooka. Now, Bob, the most interesting thing and the most thing, the thing that popularized the, the not only Bob Burns but the instrument was the fact that during the First World War, and not the First World War, the Second World War, so many World War One, so many World Wars, uh, let's see, during the Second World War, an anti-tank gun was uh, developed uh, and that uh, looked very much like Bob Burns' bazooka. So they called it the bazooka. And if you look up through World War II armament, you'll find the bazooka. And then, then there was the bubblegum, or bazooka bubblegum, or Joe, is it said Joe Bazooka? I don't know. Anyway, it's, there's a lot of bazooka lore. But the, this bazooka, or the kazood bazooka, goes back to the, uh, the early 30s or the mid-30s. Anyway, this is another little guy that I just love. Look at that. Membrane out. Very difficult or almost impossible without damaging the whole instrument to uh, replace the membrane in many of these because this is not screwed in. This is jammed. This is jammed in and over the years because of the fact that you're humming into it and your, the, your breath, the moisture from your breath is going in and rusting out the... Uh, the so it becomes, it becomes a curiosity piece. It is a kazoo. It's a beautiful little kazoo. It's, it's painted. It's, I think, made in Japan, I think. See, the interesting thing again, nobody thought kazoos were much of anything. That they, just like the child, that everybody kind of just says, ah, he's never going to grow up to amount to anything. So why bother? Why bother educating him? Or why bother, uh, you know, paying attention to anything he does? This is a beautifully made and beautifully designed kazoo. And I would swear that at one time or another, I saw some markings on here that said, see, it even has finger holes. Which would allow you to get some sort of a vibrato effect, I think. Anyway, a beautiful little kazoo, a uh, part of uh, Captain Kazoo's kazoo collection. And of course, uh, as, as we always say, uh -huh. <laughs> Same situation. Uh, Cap is uh, is uh, it's it's almost like it's uh, welded or soldered because the rust gets inside from the from all the moisture from your breath. And these buttons, although they do actually button, I mean, look at this. 
See what I mean? You know what I'm saying? But then, uh, but this is a. Yeah, I bet you haven't seen many of these, or any of these. This is a kazoo saxophone. Now, once again, it's interesting when you look over these things, and you try to find who made them or where they were made. Uh, it's hard, almost impossible, to even find a country of origin. I mean, it's like n n nobody cared. Nobody said, said, why would we bother to put our name or the company's name or the country's name on the kazoo? Now, this guy here is a, is a souvenir from the National Republican Convention, but there's no year on it. So I don't know what year it was. I, I just know that it says National Republic Convention. And <laughs> pretty good, huh? Well, that should tell you at least how, how, how old do you think this is? It's got no date on it. It's got no, no made by or made in information. You know, I, I, I've gone over in the lab, I've gone over these things with uh, magnifying glasses and bright lights, you know, and uh, you still don't get any information or anything of any consequence that allows you to identify the instrument. I'm going to continue. I think we're, we're almost uh, into 25 minutes. I'm going to continue with uh, more and more kazoos. I got kazoos all over the place. This looks like a homemade guy. <laughs> I can't hit that note. I can't hit that note. Sorry. Very clear tone. Gosh, no. I don't know how old this could possibly be. This is an old kazoo that's evidently been soldered or welded. I I, uh, I would probably say what? What would you say? Solder? Weld? I don't know. Beautiful tone. You know what's interesting? Uh, I find a lot of uh, I get a lot of email. But you know, you can imagine. I'm Captain Kazoo. I'm worldwide. I got the largest kazoo collection in the world, at least in the known world. I don't know about outer space collections. And so I get a lot of information. People ask me about everything. And when we started working with the uh, vocalizer, the <laughs> the email increased by about 150%. Oh, what is that? Where can I get one? I said, my goodness, they came out in the late 80s, about 1986 or 87, I think, around that area there. They were on the store shelves. They were in all music stores, etc. They were just as good as they are today, a fabulous instrument, but nobody paid any attention to them because they were packaged and marketed to children, to teenagers who, who just wanted something to bang and make noise and, and never developed it beyond that. So they, mo they went out of business. It's that, it's that simple, right? They sold all their stuff to Tascam. Tascam didn't want to follow up on it or blah, blah, blah. Nobody knows. And uh, before long, uh, they had disappeared. I, Captain Kazoo, revived them to some extent by by making endless recordings of the varieties of instruments that were available on the Vocalizer 1000. By the way, have you discovered SoundCloud? SoundCloud is a new, relatively new, 
uh, sound, a sound host, like YouTube, only it's only for sound. And when I say sound, I'm talking about everything from dog parts to uh, Figaro, parts to Figaro, opera to opera to, uh, to slopra. Uh, any kind of noise, any kind of sound, crowds cheering, dogs barking, uh, people being crushed to death in, 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 in horrible accidents. I don't know. Uh, but it's a great, it's a great site, and I have, uh, I have posted a, a number of sound, uh, many of them that were videos, and I simply extracted, separated the two, and posted the sound on SoundCloud, and the video still exists on YouTube. Uh, but hearing the sound without the picture is very interesting, because pictures cause your mind to think of things. This sound that I'm trying to develop is called non-objective trance, not music. It's not music. It's non-objective trance sound, right? It's much like non-objective painting, like uh, <laughs> my, my hero Jackson Pollock just throws paint on the floor. And people say, oh, that's so wonderful, Mr. Jackson Pollock. You must be a genius. And this slop, this, you know, when I was at Art Students League in New York, we used to call him Jack the Dripper, Jack the Dripper. He was a laughing stock to some extent until he hooked up with this rich woman who started to promote him and keep him drunk. And then the painting started to flow like, uh, woo, bam or rambo. Anyway, I consider myself the Jackson Pollock of sound because I just collect sound. I don't know what it is. I have machines that make sound. I have what synthesizers. I don't even know what that word means, synthesized. It means like, is that like homogenized or sterilized or pasteurized? I don't know. Uh, anyway, it, it allow, I've got machines that allow me to make all kinds of, of music simply by fooling around with them. One of them, one of them is my famous, my famous Korg. Monotron, my Korg, uh, where is that, where is the thing? Korg, Korg Monotron, right, okay. Uh, cut that, where was I? Here I am, I'm right here. Oh, you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to, uh, I'm gonna have to spin around again. I'm in the studio and I'm spinning around. I'm spinning around and I'm putting in a different, uh, a different CD. I'll put this guy up here. I'll put this guy up here. This guy up here. This guy up here. This guy up here.
National National Golden Day 2013. Okay, that's what you're doing, saying. Check out SoundCloud. Just go to Google or SoundCloud.com. Put in Sound SoundCloud.com. When the page comes up, you'll see on their page there's a thing that says look for people or look for them. Just put in the name Howard Cap. Not Cap because you'll put in Howard Cap. Then you'll get my stuff. Uh, what else? The new sale still going on. Great many bargains. You can, uh, in fact, all of the kazoos that I showed you today, if you want to get a Christmas present or something, buy them this. I'm not going to tell you how much it is, but it ain't free. Okay. Uh, Hum Don't Blow, we sent out a, uh, a retro copy, uh, along with a kazoo day, uh, national kazoo day greeting, so and so forth. It's a lot simpler, isn't it? A lot, <laughs> lot simpler. Okay, National Kazoo Day, blah, blah, blah. SoundCloud, blah, blah, blah. CaptainKazoo.com, blah, blah, blah. CaptainKazoo on YouTube, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Kazoo Sale, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. I don't know. I, I guess there isn't anything else. I'm trying to think of something. I'll toast you with some cold coffee. I hope you have a happy National Kazoo Day. Because I'm certainly going to have a happy National Kazoo Day. I'm going to have a happy National Kazoo Day hot dog. Uh, and, <laughs> and many other things. Hey, I got to go. I got to go. I got to get out of here. See you, see you later. Keep on humming.